Hey, man. What's going on? Uh, not much. Um, have you heard of? Have you heard of Larry Walters? Larry Walters? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that Larry the Cucumber's official last name? <laughs> <clears throat> no, 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 no. You might know him uh, from his more uh, infamous name, uh, Lawn Chair Larry. Yes, I, I. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm. So I know what you're talking about. So you may have heard of this guy. Yeah, he's pretty famous. Yeah, he murdered somebody with a lawn chair. <laughs> Um, just like stood over him lawn chair and then just like a guillotine like a oh gosh, <laughs> you know, is that not is, I'm lawn chair Larry. Yeah, yeah he announced himself before every, too because yeah. that person's the one that's going to spread <laughs> his rumors. He's like, you the, know? like the wet bandits We're the wet bandits with the lawn. I'm lawn chair Larry. I'm lawn chair Larry. <laughs> He was not a murderer. No, 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 no. That we know of. I don't know. He could have been. He could have been. This could have yeah. been his escape. It took so long because they had to put him on the back of a truck and drive it down a highway. <laughs> I'm just going to Venmo blind people. Yes, he's making history as the first blind pilot for American Airlines. You go into a hospital with a pellet in your eye, and someone's like, What happened? Well, I was looking up at this guy Flying over. with 43 heroin balloons. <laughs> Things I learned last night. So, uh, Lawn Chair Larry uh, was a dude who lived in San Pedro, California, mm-hmm. um, uh, and loved the sky and all things flying. Uh, and one day, he thought it would be cool to strap a bunch of balloons to his lawn chair and go for a flight. Yeah, because this is what, like what up is based off of, right? I think so. I think so. There's a lot of imitations after this. He actually wasn't the first to try this though, but we'll get to that. Um, well, let's start Different with people tried it. Huh? Different people tried it. Oh, yeah, it just became a thing um, so because but, of him or like they had tried it before him. Uh, s- s- one person tried it before him. He got the idea from someone else. Let's let's back it up. Mm. Let's start the story, right? Um, Lawn chair Larry uh, born uh, Richard Walters um, went by Larry his middle name Lawrence. Okay, um, uh, Larry uh, always dreamed of becoming a pilot for the US Air Force. He was born in uh, 1949. I always dreamed of becoming a pli- pilot um, spent his um, free time at military surplus stores buying model airplanes and yeah. laying out in his yard watching the planes fly by wanted to be a pilot so bad. Um, eventually uh, when he became an adult insist enlisted in the Air Force wanted to go through their pilot training program to become a pilot was too um, tall. No had bad eyesight. Oh, uh, so you can't see far enough and contacts haven't come out yet, so <laughs> we can't do anything for you. Sorry. You can't fly on account of the you know forehead <laughs> on your face. Eyes. There's just no eyes there. Yeah, you need eyes to fly. You need eyes to fly. Uh, yeah, you know what they say eyes in the sky not foreheads in the sky, you know, uh, so yeah, unqualified. Um, I saw the panic in your eyes as you try to figure out a way to end that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> You're like not f- foreheads in the sky. <laughs> you know, uh, you yeah. tried. That was great. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so he gets gets kicked out of pilot school and is like, hey, you could go do something else in the Air Force and he, but says, he tried. So he was like, no, I can see. He's like, I can see. He's like, he's like, look at I see that it's it, w- here's the thing about flying though. He's like, listen here, ma'am. Okay. Well, Look, I, I maybe this is a uh, I've played a lot of flight simulator um, and here's the thing about flying. You definitely need to see your instruments, but when yeah, you I've look out a lot the of windows, second life, here's the thing about marriage. <laughs> um, <are> you stupid. <laughs> no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You see your instruments. That's mm-hmm. important. That's really important. Yeah, kind of. But you look out the window, Freaking. and here's the thing. You know, wait, I've driven. I've driven a lot. You see your <laughs> instruments, right? <laughs> you can literally go to that one because you freaking drive. But here's the thing. Uh, but flying is not like driving. Like you're driving on the highway. There's a lot pretty close to you that you need to be able to see pretty well. Flying, things are pretty far away. Um, the ground's pretty far away. <laughs> The sky is pretty far away. <laughs> All the things are going to hit, but they're pretty far away. So it doesn't matter how good your eyesight is. It's blurry. 
like it's blurry for everybody because it's far away. Yeah. Um. So let's be honest. Does he need good eyesight? I don't know. Maybe to land. No, no, because here's the thing. You don't need if it's blurry. Is there been a blind pilot? Will you look that up, please? <laughs> Has there been a blind? I pilot? seriously doubt it. I think it's against the law, but yeah, we'll see. <clears throat> I guarantee someone's done it. Hold on. Oh, is this another episode? Is there a blind pilot? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah! Hold on. <laughs> I believe in that guy <laughs> or girl. What? That's right. Do an inception. Okay, so uh hey man. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Miles Hilton Barber? Miles Hilton Barber. Mm, no. Does he happen to be blind? Just on a guess. <laughs> yeah. He does. <laughs> <laughs> if I was just to guess, is he a blind guy? <laughs> Um, I haven't done any research, so this is going to be a very good episode or an inception episode. But here's the thing: inception Miles, show. Miles Hilton Barber uh, is a British adventurer who I'm literally just reading the Wikipedia article. Despite being blind, undertook a variety of expeditions all around the world to raise awareness for raise awareness and money money <laughs> for a charity organization and blind people in general. Um, <laughs> in, in general, <laughs> what are you raising money for? Blind folks. <laughs> in, in general, send, I'm just gonna Venmo blind people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> his his accomplishments uh, include uh, climbing Mount Blanc and running across the Gobi Desert and accomplishing a flight from London to Sydney blind by himself. <laughs> I don't know. There's no way. Yeah, yeah. You would have to. I, wow. Know, From London to Sydney, <laughs> I was literally that thinking is, like a Wright Brothers situation where he flew like a couple hundred yards or whatever. That's a flight, man. That's like a real flight. First blind pilot to take undertake. What the heck? How would you feel? Was it a solo flight? I don't know. I'm still. I'm still. So he. How would you feel if you're? Let's say you're on American Airlines, <laughs> and over the intercom they go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we just have a an announcement to make. Our head pilot for today is making history, and everyone claps. And it's like, yes, he's making history as the first blind pilot for American Airlines. And you, <laughs> you can't be like, hold on, right? Because that seems rude. <laughs> so here's the deal. Okay, so. I don't know exactly. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm this worried this, solo. I'm worried this might did. be more interesting than the actual topic <laughs> is what I'm like. I'm a little worried about. So do you want to like do you want to do research on it? when We talk about it a different episode or no, do you want to just, just inception? Let's just because re- I think we're kind of to the end of his accomplishments. So he uh, his flight is what's called a micro flight. I'm still okay. trying to figure out what that means, uh, but well, he, it's kind of like a microwave, right? Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, it's just based on radioactive stuff. Uh, okay. I don't know where I was going with it. Um, micro okay. flight. So micro flights are <clears throat> okay. Micro flights are not planes, technically. Uh, they're like they. So you could be a blind like train engineer. That's on a track. You know? Yeah, you let that control you. So micro flights. They're uh, like this. Oh, okay. And okay. You sit in them, and it, apparently, and I'm still trying to figure this out. It sounds like the remote controlled, so it sounds like he just sat in this plane while someone flew him to Sydney in this remote control plane. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not 100 percent positive. What year is it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it seems relatively recent. I'm trying to figure out. Because this guy, he's a motivational speaker now. He oh, he's still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah, a yeah. motivational speaker. Um, oh, here's his website. Okay, this what will year be did helpful. the flight happen? This will be helpful. Okay, um, <clears throat> he took a 55 day, 20, 21,000 flight mile, kilometer flight from London to Sydney, 
Uh, took 55 days. Yeah, it took him 55 days. So he did have a sighted co-pilot. Okay. Um, but he used <laughs> uh, a a speech output technology. I don't know what that means to help him pilot his plane. So he piloted it. Uh, oh my gosh! And he broke the sound barrier. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, and, and, but this isn't it. This isn't all he did. He, uh, uh, what is happening right now? Who is this guy? Uh, he circumnavigated. That's what we're all waiting for you to tell us. He circumnavigated the globe using eighty different forms of transport, including boat, uh, bobsled, uh, whitewater rafting, and swimming, uh, scuba diving, parasailing. Uh, he drove blind, blind scuba diving stresses me out. Yeah, that does. Um, uh, let's see. He was the first blind person to participate in a drag racing event, driving at 150 miles an hour. Uh, climbed that mountain. I mentioned that uh, he uh, took a 400 kilometer uh, uh, sledge, is what this says, across Antarctica. He ran across so the Sahara. Was he on a 150 miles across the Sahara? Who is this man? So was <laughs> so he did a did he do a dog sled team? Yeah, by himself across him. <laughs> well, yeah, but if you got 12 seeing eye dogs <laughs> to pull your sled. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> This man is a legend. <laughs> this guy's is, was what was his name again? <clears throat> Miles Hilton Barber. Miles Hilton Barber. We should interview him. Yeah, we should. I mean, we can uh, we can reach out to him. He does, he does events. Yeah. I mean, we've got a couple weeks. Should we try to get him at the live show? I, no, but I think we should try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. Fiddle off that guy. So, lawn chair, Larry. (laughs) (laughs) Lawn chair, Larry couldn't make it in the Navy or in the Air Force. He couldn't do what Miles (laughs) could do. That's what's unfortunate is that it's been done. It's been done now. Um, Yeah, all uh, uh, lawn chair, Larry, Larry uh, Walters. He was uh, nearsighted. Okay. Uh, uh, Hilton Barber was blind. (laughs) Yeah, so it's like. (laughs) So you can see, you know, you can see some stuff, Larry. You just can't see all of it. You just can't see all the stuff. We only want people who can see <laughs> absolutely everything or absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. No in between. <laughs> yeah, that's the only people we want in the skies. So instead, do you play Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator with your eyes closed? Though I've never tried it, um, but pilots do 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 this. Um, when they're learning how to fly IFR, there's two kinds of flying. There's VFR and IFR. VFR is visual, so you're actually looking out the windows and looking where you're going. IFR is instrument, so you're flying completely with your instruments, um, and that's what like like airline pilots do. They're all instrument flights. They're not looking out the window. I mean, they'll look out the window, but that's not how, how they're, they're figuring out where they're going and stuff. It's all instrument flying. And when they're learning, they that they do what's called hood flights. And they have a hood that they wear that literally attaches to the instruments, so you can't see out the windows. All you can see is your instruments, and that's the most terrifying thing in the world to me. Like <laughs> trying to fly and not being able to see out the windows, um, but it's important. Yeah, I for, did that with driving once, though. I made it downtown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got pulled over, and he was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm a hood driving." I'm hood training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So ended up in the hood. Ironically. <laughs> I was oh, no. pretty crazy, you know. I was like, "Whoa!" I hate that joke <laughs> so much. I just followed my yeah. Well, it's kind of like uh, did you see? Did you watch uh, Bird Box? No. Oh, where they just went off of GPS because you can't for whatever reason. It was like if you open your eyes, the monster is gonna get you or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they so they covered the car windows and everything, and then went off the GPS, and they're just driving through the streets just yeah. based on the GPS. Interesting. Yeah, same concept, I guess. Wait, so is this like a post apocalyptic like? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a little bit like yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. (laughs) So it's like M. Night Shyamalan made a movie in like 2010 maybe called the happening. Mm -hmm. Did you see that one? 
that's got our guy. I don't uh, know if I saw it, but I Hugh remember. Jackman, uh, Mark Wahlberg <laughs> slash Robert Downey Robert Jr. Downey Jr. Slash, bon slash Bon Jovi. Jovi. You know, it's got that guy in it. Yeah, uh, but the idea of that movie was that the plants are emanating a scent. Yeah, and whenever people breathe it, their brain chemistry turns their survival instinct flips. Yeah, and they uh, commit suicide. This was the same Jeez. thing for this was that whatever it was when you see it, it flips your survival instinct and you kill yourself weird. Yeah, it, it, it kind of seemed like movies had happened. Oh. Um, it was like a mix between the happening and the quiet place because you couldn't open yeah. your eyes. So it was like a yeah. it was it was a Sunder book with uh, the blindfold and I've they're, the, they're yeah. going down the river blind. You yeah. Know? Yeah, um, and you can't open your eyes or whatever anyway. Interesting. Yeah, I so have no idea about that. Yeah, it wasn't gr- I, I didn't hate it, but I was like, eh. you know, I like this has been telling movie reviews. All right. Well, why don't we just Uh, so Larry, uh, he was like, "Well, I can't be a pilot, so I guess I'll do the next best thing, and I'll become a truck driver." Um, so he starts driving trucks, um, and in the eighties, uh, he was like, "Okay, maybe there's a possibility of me actually flying." Because in the early eighties, he heard about a story from 1937 um, where a guy named Al Mingalone, uh, he was a photographer for Paramount News, um, he was putting together a feature uh, photography assignment um, in Maine where he needed like some scenic photography uh, and so but the the it was 37 so it was not easy to get aerial photos like you it was 1937. Take, yeah, so he this is a well, story. Don't you got any pilots that can get aerial photos. <laughs> I mean it, it was more difficult because you not a lot of is the 30s is the 30s pilots aren't okay. aren't readily available. There's no helicopters yet. I think helicopters were like two or three years out. Okay. Um, that's how long they took to get anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> helicopters took for I mean at that point <laughs> it was like you know they had to stop every couple hundred feet. Yep, you yep, know yep. they hadn't really figured out the fl- it took so long because they had to put them on the back of a truck and drive it down a highway. <laughs> you know because they, they hadn't figured out the flight part. <laughs> Yeah, we can get you a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can get you a helicopter. Don't worry. Yeah, get to the chopper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's right. It's over there on the truck. Can it fly? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it was going like 80 down the highway today. <laughs> <laughs> Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with too many advertisements during the Tillin podcast? <laughs> Have we got good news for you? Our patrons enjoy ad free experience and they get early access to content behind the scenes stuff exclusive merchandise and access to a private discord channel where we all are in it our producers and the hosts. So if you'd like to be a patron today and solve that problem, why don't you text Tillin to six six eight six six. Uh, but he he read this story about Al Mingalone and what Al did to get his aerial photos is he bought 32 weather balloons and he got a uh, like parachutes like harness and he tied it to these weather balloons and tethered and himself to the ground himself. and let himself lift up so he could get those photos in Maine for his assignment. Oh my gosh um, and uh, got the assignment done got the photos everything turned out great. Yeah, uh, and so Larry heard this story and Larry said well I could golly. Fly. He says I could do that. Just doesn't sound like they had a sight test for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. They'll I don't need sell to see weather balloons to just about anybody. <laughs> There's no eye test for weather balloons. You could show up with one eye and they'll give you a weather balloon. <laughs> so he starts. Do you remember the kid that got like you know was disappeared and would they thought that he was on the weather balloon? Do you remember that? Oh, it was I a big remember news that story. Balloon the news boy. was following it this was balloon. balloon. Boy. Yeah, they were following this. They were like, "There's a child <laughs> potentially trapped in this balloon." Whole time in his parents' attic. <laughs> and that kid, that kid. You're not gonna believe it. You're not gonna believe it. Ferdinand Waldo <laughs> Dunmer. <laughs> I hate you. 
Ferdinand Waldo <laughs> Damaro. Uh, so anyways, uh, so uh, uh, Larry, he starts doing the math and he says, okay, right. I want to get about 80 feet into the air. If I want to do that, um, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to calculate how much uh, helium like the lifting power of helium and how much helium I could fit in balloons and then figure out how many balloons I'm going to buy. So originally he was like, I'm just going to go to party city and buy like 70 packs of balloons. So he's like doing the math and he realizes I'm going to need so many balloons. Party city is just selling <laughs> balloons. Well, yeah, like for party balloons. And he's uh, just like, I'm going to go to party <laughs> city <laughs> and just buy like 200 balloons. Well, he starts doing the math. Well, they're suspicious at that point. They go, they don't sell you over like a hundred. Yeah, well, like, now they definitely don't. Happening. They, they go, what for are ID you at trying that point. to do? <laughs> and he's like, nothing. I just love my kids. I'm just having a party. Like, a what balloon are their names? Party. He's like, the kid, kid, <laughs> kid, uh, child, and tyke. Kid, Cuddy. Oh, <laughs> and my other one, Kid Rock. <laughs> Uh, like, okay, that checks out. <laughs> 200 balloons. So he's like doing actual calculations. Yeah, on he's it, doing the math. He realizes, okay, wait, this is going to be a lot of balloons. Right, 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 right. And so then he says, I could get military surplus balloons, and I would only have to get like 20 of those. Military surplus? Yeah, which I don't know what the military I don't know why the military's got so. I mean, and enough for there's a surplus, you know? The military like, is like, is here's the balloons we didn't need. <laughs> what is, yeah, what is the military? How many did balloons? you need? <laughs> well, I mean, everybody. Well, everyone in the military's got a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a birthday. It doesn't matter if you're a soldier or a civilian. Like, we've got to celebrate. Oh, yeah? What are their names? <laughs> Citizen soldier. <laughs> soldier for Christ. <laughs> Oh, that checks out. Here's <laughs> yeah, here's, here's a, a billion <laughs> balloons. <laughs> here's a balloonian balloons. <laughs> balloonian. <laughs> yeah, do you have I, I'm looking for balloon a balloonian balloons yeah. shaped like baloney. That's gonna a balloon, really a balloonian baloney. We're balloons. gonna have to raise the debt ceiling, <laughs> so we're gonna have to attach a few balloons to the debt ceiling so that it comes on up so we can afford a billion balloony balloons. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it doesn't balloon the economy. Yeah. They come from Buffalo, so they're Buffalonian <laughs> It's a bu- it's a balloonian buffalonian baloney balloons. I'll tell you what. And we actually, you know, we had enough of them, uh, and we had a western themed restaurant, right? <laughs> so we that's where we stored all of them. We filled. We, so we had we actually renamed the restaurant. Uh, it was called the <laughs> balloonian. Buffalonian baloney balloon saloon <laughs> balloon saloon and uh, they actually on Tuesday oh nights gosh. we have a bassoonist <laughs> so you can come on down to the buffalo the, the baloney and buff baloney balloon saloon bassoonist <laughs> he goes by buffoon. <laughs> Too much. This is too much. <laughs> so, anyways, he realizes he could get a bunch of military Old surplus military balloons. balloons. Old military balloons. Not used ones, though. <laughs> yeah, you don't want used. You don't balloons. want used you balloons. Want fresh balloons. <laughs> <clears throat> and so he starts doing the math with that. Yeah. And then, what is the what's the how much helium does it take to lift a person? Uh, I'll tell you how much it takes to lift a person's spirits. Whatever amount it is that makes you go, you know, that's a good <laughs> amount. Uh, yeah, how much helium could kill a person? <laughs> <laughs> that was so. <laughs> I'm sorry, that got so intense. The way I said that <laughs> was, I was <laughs> that was that was very lawn chair Larry of me to ask how to murder somebody. <laughs> Uh, so would a teaspoon of helium take someone out. Uh, so uh, according to how stuff works, um, <laughs> a helium balloon can lift about 14 grams. 
So you need about how many grams of balloons to lift one pound. Oh my gosh. So but that's an average party city balloon. Okay, um, okay, okay. So uh, here's actually on Union University. How many I am 12 years old and weigh about 100 pounds. How many helium balloons would it take to lift me? This is right before the balloon kid incident. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so they yeah. posted that day. <laughs> so they said it would take over. It would take 3, 2,754 balloons to yeah. lift 100 pounds. Uh, so that's why he shifted to the military surplus balloons because it's about 15 or 20. Um, sure, but he had a hard time finding enough of those. Apparently they weren't in surplus. Um, so uh, instead he shifted and said, well, I'll just get weather balloons like the original guy who did this and so yeah, <clears throat> Uh, he was able to get forty three. How balloons. much? How much were a weather balloon lift? Do you know? Well, let's see. I hate when you fake type. <laughs> That's how I type. Stop it! You're gonna break my screen. I, I would rather you type like that than this. I guess. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so a weather balloon um, can carry a payload of up to two thousand grams. Uh, so let's uh, just figure out grams to pounds. <laughs> One gram, two thousand. This is how grams. you know we don't do like hard drugs. <laughs> it's four and a half pounds. So, oh wow, a weather balloon can lift four and a half pounds. So you need about a hundred of them to lift. <coughs> oh, yeah. I mean, about fifty of them to lift a two hundred pound person, I guess. Yeah. So he he got forty three. Still okay. I was gonna say he yeah, forty three balloons, um, and he tied them to his lawn chair, filled them with helium, um, put on a parachute, strapped himself. How do you hold it down whenever you're? Yeah. So he tied it to his jeep. Uh, he tethered it oh, to his Jeep. That um, makes sense. And uh, sat now, his, what if? <clears throat> hear me out. Yeah. Gets it wrong, <laughs> and the Jeep just starts going. And he goes, "Oh God! Oh God!" Okay. <laughs> He's like trying to pull the Jeep pull down. The Jeep down. <laughs> uh, uh, Sorry, yeah, I, this uh, just did. We're uh, we're at a uh, seventy second and Pedro. Uh, there is a uh, man attached to forty three. Uh, Army surplus weather balloons, weather balloons, and a jeep uh, floating across the valley. I'll tell you what, Tommy. I, I really hope that someone can wrangle that wrangler. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> bunch of cowboys running down. Why? <laughs> with the last <laughs> try, trying to lasso. <laughs> They all catch it and it starts lifting. They're them. lassoing a, they're lassoing then the, then the, the, and then the horses go up with them because <laughs> yes, I don't know how I don't know how that works. <laughs> they're right? strapped. They're strapped <laughs> in strapped so the that horse. they're just because then you got the weight of horses pulling your legs, <laughs> right? Just like you're like you're like so the cowboys are screaming, yeah, right? They're in pain, and so they they're are now this these weather balloons are just blowing all, and I mean it's it one looks of those like things, a barrel of monkeys swing, yeah, that's exactly bunch. where I was going. They're swinging and they're just picking stuff up along the way, right? The only thing you know what they had to do to save everybody what? was that someone had to go with a giant axe and they had to cut into the town's molasses <laughs> supply, so the molasses spilled out and, and they came and strung on it. Them. Yes, that's the only way to catch it, like a giant wow. fly trap. What a crazy event! You had to, you had to turn uh, the city of Phoenix into a fly. It was the Phoenix fly trap. <laughs> the Phoenix. <fly> <laughs> <trap>. <laughs> that was super quick, guys. I'm really proud of that one. Uh, so, anyways, on uh, 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 July second, nineteen eighty-two, uh, he set up those balloons, filled them with hair uh, with helium. Not heroin. Forty-three red balloons, full of heroin. <laughs> I'll tell you what you want to get high. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get it. We have 43 balloons full of heroin and they're all just on the ground. Hold on. <laughs> if these helium tanks are full of heroin, what got sent to the kids birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean like you got kids A bunch of helium syringes. <laughs> Just shooting helium at each other at these. Why is that the thing? <laughs> Why are they in syringes now? That's what heroin is, right? We're you syringe <laughs> heroin. <laughs> yeah, but I was thinking they got put in the helium tank. <laughs> no, because the heroin was in the helium tank. So, so the, the helium, helium has was to in be the in the heroin, heroin syringe tank. <laughs> 
<laughs> do you buy heroin by the tank? We don't know. Yeah, uh, clearly this is how you know that me and Tim are never involved in anything sketchy <laughs> is how often we joke about sketchy stuff and we don't know <laughs> a si- we don't know a single lingo. You know, we go how many grams are in a pound? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> you know, what does IPA stand for? Not a clue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I just <laughs> equated beer drinking and heroin <laughs> use, but whatever. <laughs> anyways, they so are the same. It's the same. So launch air Larry, uh, <clears throat> he fills these balloons with helium, puts his parachute on, and then straps himself into a, a literal lawn chair. Um, and he grabs his pellet gun, a CB radio, a couple sandwiches, some beer, and a camera. Um, and he asks his friend, "Hey, okay, uh, when I tell you, <clears throat> cut the cord that I have tied to my Jeep um, and let me go for my flight." And so, his, according to his calculations. His calculation said, "Okay, I'll oh, probably okay, fly." Hold on, though. What is the pellet gun for? Like, I'm assuming it's is it for descent? Yeah, it's when he wants to go okay, down. He's gonna pop. But he's not gonna go around town shooting his enemies <laughs> from the bullet. He's like, "All right, you go into a hospital with a pellet in your eye," and someone's like, "What happened?" Well, I was looking up at this guy flying over with 43 heroin <laughs> balloons, <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly there was, you know, just got a pellet in my eye. Yeah, yeah. he's not like. He's flying over. He's like, he's like, Barbara, this is for what you did. He's not like uh, <laughs> hanging out the side of a helicopter. No, 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 like, no, but it's a launch. He's going he's gonna to shoot himself down. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> he's going to shoot the balloons and that's yeah. how he's going to come down. Okay, according to his math. He's like, I should fly about 80 feet in the air. Be able to fly, sure. shoot myself down and we're good. Uh, so his friend cuts the cord and his lawn chair starts rising rapidly to 16,000 feet. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> he really messed up. And he the, was like, he's like something's wrong. <laughs> this isn't going right <laughs> uh, where he was. Is he strapped <laughs> into the chair? Yeah, he's strapped in the chair. He does. Okay, uh, and up well, at he got an old seat belt that he just like <laughs> he tied to the it's a lawn chair. So it's got those little loops. So, so up there remind me loops. again. He's got the pellet gun and what else with gun, him? a CB radio. Oh, a okay. couple sandwiches some beer and a camera couple uh, sandwiches. Yeah, and he's wearing a parachute. Where's he trying to go? I, I mean, I don't know. He's obviously trying to have a picnic up there. Or he just want to go up. Yeah, he just wants to fly and so he figured he'd go about 80 feet in the air. Uh, he thought he was just going to fly around like his neighborhood. Um, seek the valley. Hey guys, and then come back. you know, so and they're like, like oh, is that old Larry Walters? Yeah, up Larry's there? flying up there. He's mm-hmm. shooting them with they the even. Gun. What if they you called him lawn chair Larry before this incident? <laughs> you know, like he's just always out there in his lawn. <laughs> that old lawn chair Larry. <laughs> he's still you know? in his lawn chair way up there. Uh, <laughs> so drifting around uh, uh, Los Angeles at this yeah. point, um, and slowly at sixteen thousand feet, he drifts over Long Beach, um, and then. Is he going toward the ocean? Well, he drifts over the primary approach uh, corridor of the Long Beach Airport. Oh no! And so a couple of airplanes spot him, and well, how they, they use their they're using sight. instruments. <laughs> they use their eyes. They have good eyesight. He doesn't. Oh, okay, okay. He okay. didn't see he the didn't plane see him at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "What's that noise?" <laughs> Yeah, they're like, like, yeah, there's a guy on a chair. He didn't see us at all. Yeah. Didn't even try to move. Didn't seem to acknowledge our existence. He had a gun. He didn't even shoot at us. I oh don't think gosh. he knew we were there. He had a gun. Yeah, yeah that's another thing too. Yeah. So, uh, you, but imagine also that he did shoot at him, right? Because <laughs> then you're in one of those little planes. And you hear <laughs> what? <laughs> this guy got a <laughs> pellet gun. Can shoot us pellets. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't even damage the plane. <laughs> He gets on the CB radio and he's able to contact air traffic control and he's like, hey, so I'm I don't know what to do <laughs> and they hey guys. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, and at like, this point what's up here is a talking dog and a boy scout <laughs> with me <laughs> and uh, I don't really know how to get down, so he's talking to air traffic control. He changes channels. Did see Alex just drop all of his papers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like they just <laughs> Slow and he just washed it. He just went, oh no, he just let it happen. He just let it happen. That's a professional right there. Uh, not phased. Uh, so then he gets in contact with a citizens like radio station called react and this is this is one of my favorite parts of the whole situation because he gets on the radio station on <laughs> with react 
and react the host gets him on the on the radio. He's on a CB radio at 16,000 feet. Yeah, and the host is like what information do you wish to tell me at this time as to your location and your at, at this time yeah. at this time. What is the info and this is recorded. This is recorded. He says ah uh, the difficulty is uh, uh, this was an unauthorized balloon launch and uh, I know I'm in federal airspace and uh, I'm sure ground crew has alerted the proper authority, but uh, just call them and let them know I'm okay. And so he just floats around over the airport for 45 minutes <coughs> and eventually he starts He's shooting. like, let him know I'm okay. Yeah, what are you like, talking about? Like, hey, I'm just fine. You know, let him know I'm fine. Let Don't worry know about I'm it. Fine up here. I'll probably float somewhere else in a minute. Just, <laughs> hey guys, just wanted to let you know. I you've probably seen, uh, <laughs> but I'm fine. I that's, think I had the chair. Larry, that's literally not the concern. <laughs> <laughs> the concern Literally. was like, is that guy okay? The concern was like, can we get him out of our airspace? Yeah, can you go somewhere else? Yeah. Um, so he's like, well, I don't really have a way of controlling this thing. I do have one of those. You know, when you go to a theme park and you get that little fan, <laughs> you know, I've got one of those just <laughs> and I can try to like try to go through. <laughs> That's how he's steering himself. He's up there. He's like, oh, too far. <laughs> <laughs> so he he's he's up there and he's really nervous to start shooting his balloons because he's really high and so yeah. he's afraid that what will happen. Yeah, because all the heroin. Things. He's super high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like he's like if I shoot the balloons, I'm going to be covered in heroin. <laughs> Head to toe. You don't understand how much heroin I got up here. That's the other thing I was worried about too is that I am on federal property <laughs> with, with lots of heroin. A, any amount of heroin is illegal, I think, but I've got definitely over whatever the legal limit is way past the legal limit of heroin in blue way past the legal limit of zero heroin. <laughs> so he 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 ends up uh, uh, he's like he's like if I shoot the balloons a couple things could happen one uh, I could die. It could be like a rapid drop in altitude and he's, oh, af yeah, he's yeah. afraid that that drop would like pressure and like it would be bad. He would pass out and then rough. He's like, he's like the other scenario. The other possible scenario is I shoot the balloon and then it puts me off kilter and then I'm hanging in this chair like sideways. sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's afraid to shoot it. Basically, air traffic control is like, you got to start shooting balloons, man. So he does it. He starts shooting balloons. Everything's okay. Does he, he have a parachute? Descend. He doesn't have a parachute, but I mean, they he don't does. Want, yeah, but they don't want him to just leave this balloon chair floating through the sky. He's still up there they to this day. To actually, <laughs> He just parachuted down, and that and balloon's just up floating there over with the a airport. six pack of beer and two sandwiches. <laughs> just you know, up there for whoever can get it. Literally, what is the date of this again? Uh, this is July second, nineteen eighty two. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, you go to that airport, and literally just floating over runway B is just they that. To close down that whole airport yeah, now because yeah. <laughs> it's not open. It's actually a protected. <clears throat> National Park. Mm -hmm. So he was very careful trying not to unbalance the load. He shot a couple of them um, and then he accidentally drops his pellet gun <laughs> into the airport <laughs> and they were like, hey, Larry, we just saw something fall. Can you tell me that was literally anything other than your gun? <laughs> uh, was like, well, was it a beer? N no, was no. it a sandwich Larry? <laughs> no, was it the pellet gun? You know, yeah. <laughs> I am fine. I just want everybody to know everyone I'm know okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Larry, that's not the concern. Larry, we don't care if you're okay or not. <laughs> Larry, that's not a concern. Over. Uh, like they're all there using. Do you think they abandoned the ling like the, the the official lingo? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like it like from their Where they're just like, "Oh man, you done messed up, Larry." Yeah, Larry, what are you doing? Hey, have you ever heard of Tillin Podcast merch? That's right. We've got a full merch store of Tillin branded tees, mugs, stickers, hoodies, a lot more. And we put out new designs with every episode, but those are only available for a limited time. So you got to get those while they're hot. Text Tillin to 66866 to get access to our exclusive merchandise. Uh, so, uh, he now has no way to shoot himself down, uh, but he had shot enough balloons where he's descending. So he descends very slowly okay. uh, back to the ground. Eventually uh, the cables for his balloon get uh, caught and tangled up in a power line. Oh no and break the the power line causing a blackout <laughs> uh, and he's just dangling in his lawn chair from these power lines. <laughs> Just 
drinking his beer. Can somebody get me down. I mean, like if you if it takes you a few hours, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm okay. I've got Tell two sandwiches. Okay. I've got one more some beer. beers. <laughs> and so they arrested him on in- intoxicated flying. <laughs> intoxicated flying. Uh, flying Did he without get 2020 vision. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Impaired uh, driving and <laughs> impaired vision. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when they finally cut him down, uh, Long Beach Police Department was waiting for him, and they immediately arrested him. Oh, um, but it took man. him a while. It took him a while to figure out what to charge him with. Um, uh, and they said, "Well, uh, they were like, if he had a pilot's license, then we'd suspend that, but he doesn't. Uh, so, so we don't know what to do." Um, yeah. Uh, so eventually, um, they. Uh, they did get him um, and the charges that uh, they gave him were a charge of operating a civil aircraft for which there is not currently in effect an airworthiness certificate. That was the charge. Uh, so basically you just flew something that w- we haven't said is okay. Um, and so uh, that's fair. I guess he got a fifteen hundred dollar fine um, and that was it. Uh, <laughs> that was that. Yeah, that was that did. Was there any fundraisers that helped him pay it? Because uh, I, I mean, actually. I would imagine he became a big news story, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, almost uh, just after landing, he told the, or landing, he told the press. Uh, he said, uh, "It's something I just uh, I had to do." He said, "I had this dream for twenty years, and if I hadn't done it, I think I would have ended up in the funny farm." I don't know what that means. But did he enjoy it though? It's the psych word. Oh, um, okay. Did he enjoy it? Uh, yeah, so yeah, he loved it. Um, <laughs> he loved every minute of it. Uh, he uh, apparently uh, named his lawn chair in the flight the Inspiration One, um, which I saw a. Where's the lawn chair today? Uh, we'll get to that. Um, <clears throat> I saw in a a uh, another video was talking about it, and they said that he named it the Inspiration One, um, which was a missed opportunity to call it Chair Force One. Oh, I love that so much. Chair <laughs> Force One. But yeah, so he ends up uh, uh, the Dang. Darwin Awards. He got a Darwin Award in '93 with the title of At Risk Survivor. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but what it seems the like a jab. Awards? I don't know what that is either. The Darwin Awards seem like you know dumb people dying. Oh, to that's actually exactly what it is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, he ten days afterwards he appeared on David Letterman, um, and then uh, flew in. They <laughs> 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 were like, "Will you bring your chair up here?" Yeah, bring your chair. Um, and so uh, he was kind of reaching this like level of like kind of fame, right? Yeah. For it, uh, he paid his fine and everything was whatever, and um, he got an he was uh. Uh, featured in a Timex ad, uh, and so he had like the, a the print ad that they ran. Yeah, and it was like it was like they were like time. Watch the skies. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking the, about? yeah, so he was the he was the celebrity endorsement on this Timex ad, um, <clears throat> and so he quit his job as a truck driver, and then uh, became a motivational speaker, telling people to pursue their dreams. Nice. The problem was he wasn't a good speaker. Hey, uh, hey, got, uh, hey, guys. Um, <clears throat> I um, so I uh, if there's no, I just no, want everyone to know I'm okay. <laughs> I'm fine. Over, right? And that's how he ends his speech. <laughs> and so he goes out there. He's like, he's like, uh, niner niner. And they were like, what? He's what just making doing? up what he thinks is airplane. And he's like, airplane speed. He's yeah. like, yeah. He's like, uh, the weather is 85 here today with the clear skies and visibility. You know, whenever they tell you just too much information on planes, yeah. They're just like, yeah, the visibility is about 12 miles and, uh, <laughs> You know, barometric pressure is about that, and you're just like, why are you telling me this? Yeah, I don't. You're just know bored. Any of this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so he didn't have a career as a motivational speaker. It didn't last long. He ended up going back to truck driving. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Imagine though, you do this big thing, you start booking speaking gigs, and you're you so do, you bad. do a Timex ad. You do a Timex ad. You have to go back to truck driving. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. Oh man, that's so sad. Not that truck driving is sad, <clears throat> but it's just but sad. Like. That you had to go back to whatever your job was before yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, your yeah. job was. It's before. sad that he thought, oh, I just opened up this new career path. This yeah. exciting new career path just to go back. The to what he was sky's doing the limit. 
The limit was 16,000 feet. Oh, no, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the lawn chair he used in the flight, there was a neighborhood boy named Jerry who uh, really admired what he did hung around yeah. Walter for a long time after this weird relationship. Um, but uh, Walter gave him the lawn chair as a gift because he was a big fan. Um, <clears throat> a few years later, the Smithsonian reached out to him and asked if they could have the lawn chair to put on the exhibit. Shut up. And he said, no. Well, I don't have it. I gave it to that neighborhood boy, Jerry. <laughs> oh, they at least had to Larry and asked. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they reached out to Larry. And I asked thought they asked Smithsonian. Jerry. Yeah, <clears throat> so um, 20 years later, Jerry's an adult. Um, Cherry, Jerry. Jerry, cherry, Jerry. Oh, cherry, Jerry. Cher- oh okay. So, um, all right, shut up, dude. <laughs> he ended up <laughs> reaching out to the San Diego Air and Space Museum oh. and let them take it to put it in their exhibit. And the Smithsonian for, didn't get it. Yeah, the Smithsonian didn't get it. The Smithsonian was like, yeah, the Smithsonian was like, ah, oh, San Diego Air and Space Museum, our arch nemesis, <laughs> our rivals. You know, the two <laughs> top museums in the world, the Smithsonian <laughs> and the San Diego Air and Space. I mean, we all saw that movie at about the night at, night the, San at Diego. the San Diego. <laughs> Where all the planes and lawn chairs come, come to life. The lawn chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen that movie. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> he ends up uh, uh, later in his life. He did some volunteer work for uh, the Forest Service. Um, broke up with his girlfriend, um, Larry. Yeah, Larry broke up with his girlfriend of fifteen years. Um, he had a girlfriend of fifteen years. Yeah, it's the sort of situation where it's like, yeah, we don't do labels. Hey, that's we'll what get, it sounds like. We'll get married after I fly. <clears throat> yeah, um, and then uh, uh, worked sporad- sporadically as a security guard and died in nineteen ninety three. Uh, at the age of 44 really young. Oh, um, so uh, but here's the thing what he did. It spawned uh, a <laughs> legitimate extreme sport called cluster ballooning. <laughs> <laughs> Where I could you not people anything with the word cluster <laughs> in it should be banned forever. <laughs> I kid you not. The sport is just tie a bunch of balloons to something and ride it somewhere. Um, and that's the whole sport. It's what he did just over and over again. Um, so the first person to do it uh, was a guy named Kevin Walsh uh, in 1984. Just two years after him, um, he flew to 9000 feet uh, with 57 balloons um, and then jumped out of it with a parachute. Uh, he got a four thousand dollar fine because uh, FAA regulation stuff, you know, have they now approved balloon flights? Uh, I think you can go get a license for like a recreational pilot's license um, to do balloon flights um, because the Guinness Book of World Records. What are you going to um, do? Like, a, like you get like a Cessna? Or what do you, you want to do? He's like, well, I just want to mm, buy some balloons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, but imagine a guy tries to do all this, right? And he's goes home and just starts. <laughs> and you walk in, your apartment's flooded with balloons that he's blown up like that. And, yeah, all, and you're like, cluster blooming. like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm gonna fly with these. And you're like, do you know how? Okay. <laughs> and he just goes outside his car. He drives his car. It looks like one of those like just <laughs> married people. There's just a bunch of balloons trailing behind the car. He and did he's a like, lot of extra because he knew they'd pop on the drive. Like, so what? some of them are popping. What's going on? He opens the back of his trailblazer, right? They all start pouring out. He's like, he's like, I gotta go faster. I gotta hit 88 miles an hour for it to take <laughs> off. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> carbon dioxide. <laughs> what an idiot. Uh, so <clears throat> passed out several times blowing up all the balloons. Um, <clears throat> in 2001 in New Mexico to a team Mike Howard and Steve Davis. They flew to 18,300 feet broke the Guinness Book of World wow. Records record for it um, and a bunch of other people started doing these flights all over the place. Um, <clears throat> it became really big in the 2000s. Um, yeah, the, I feel like weird stuff became big in the 2000s. You know, we were in like slime and all that. Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, so here's a couple of really notable ones. Um, a Roman Catholic priest and human rights defender uh, by the name of Adelir Antonio de Carli. Uh, he took off from Brazil 
and flew across the border into Argentina. Oh, um, and this was a big civil rights demonstration was him doing this and it was a lawn chair balloon cluster or cluster ballooning flight. Um, another big you got cluster one. ballooned. <laughs> uh, uh, he won a Darwin Award for that as well. Um, another big one was in May 28th, 2010. Uh, a guy by the name of Jonathan Trapp uh, crossed the English Channel. Uh, wow. With these balloons. Um, and he actually, ironically, this guy, um, <clears throat> he replicated the house from up for a National Geographic TV show. Um, he apparently can also build how many balloons would it take to lift the house? I'm sure someone's on the math, right? Uh, I'm yeah, probably I'll look that up real quick. Yeah. You're so you're just making it up. <clears throat> Most houses but weigh between 80,000 and 160,000 pounds. Uh, so lot. it would take about 1.5 million cubic feet of helium or about as much as it would be contained in about a hundred and five thousand balloons that were three feet in diameter. So giant balloons. Those are those big balloons that are like from the sorority girl pictures. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are big balloons. I worry about the sorority houses, you know, because because <laughs> they've got those <laughs> shaped balloons that are just like you know one uh, two <coughs> two zero two one or whatever yeah, 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 and like yeah. all of a sudden the sorority house is floating just away. Just gonna float away. And, <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> so Jonathan Trapp did that uh, trip across the the English Canal. Um, big win, right? I think it was a four big hour win, trip. Right? Yeah, big win, right? Huge, huge win. Huge win. You know, wow, what a win. Uh, in 2010. So then in September 2013, <laughs> he tried to cross the Atlantic. <laughs> Oh, he no. took off from Maine, uh, but ended up having to land in Canada uh, because he was unable to control his balloon. So he obviously went off course. Yeah. Um, so that didn't work out well. He got uh, to Canada <clears throat> and was like, "This is India. <laughs> You're all Indians, right?" <laughs> and they're like, "Bro, it's 2013." <laughs> He's like, "I know where I landed." <laughs> I got a report back. They were like, check your iPhone. Like, <laughs> yeah. What's your chip called? It's the Mayflyer. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I found a new land in 2013. Joe Barbera. Uh, he broke another. He broke the Guinness Book of World Records for height at 21,000 feet. Oh my gosh. Um, Did he, was he sponsored by Red Bull? <clears throat> I don't know. Actually, oh, it that seems say. like the Red Bull era. That does where they seem were just like Red Bull would have. Yeah, would have said, hey, let's do that. Um, and then here's my favorite one of all um, in uh, September 2nd, 2020. The record was once again broken um, last year. Yep. Uh, at a height of 24,900 feet um, suspended by one hand. So he literally just held on by one hand um, and it was broken by David Blaine. <laughs> No way. No way. Show me a picture. No way. No way. David Blaine. Come on. I and hate he, that guy. He was sponsored by Red Bull. Oh, of course he was. No way. David Blaine. The David Blaine. Hold on. Let me see if I can get a close shot so you can tell it's him. Sometimes I think it's wild that we live at the same time as David Blaine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what a wonder to be alive. I mean, he's harnessed into it, though. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, they weren't going to be like, "Yeah, we can put this on TV. You just hold on to it." What his arm pops out of socket? How old's David Blaine? I don't know. Let's find out. Because he's been—I <laughs> mean, he's been doing that stuff for a minute. <laughs> what did David Blaine? We should do an episode on David Blaine, please. Yeah. Okay. How old is David? He's Forty-eight. Blaine? Forty-eight years. <laughs> so at forty-seven, you're just like, you know what? I'm gonna. <laughs> How do you tell your wife? Hey, uh, I got this idea. What do you I hate mean? that he's I in a run full black idea. suit. <laughs> yeah, I hate so that he's Blaine. and you know it's a tearaway suit. Yeah. So that way when he lands, he can just pull it Pulls off it and off. be like, "I've been Phoenix Jones this whole time." <laughs> and you're like, "What? <laughs> what just happened?" Uh, yeah. So, um, 
Do you remember when it, like it was it like 2008, 2000, it might be like 2006, 2007, whatever the era where it was like it. I mean, Chris Angel and David Blaine were rock stars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I they mean, were. they were huge. they were a big deal and honestly and I now he's like I got to go out above the Grand Canyon in, in with balloons, balloons. <laughs> and I didn't even hear about it. That's how <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's fair. Um, so yeah, so uh, in later uh, lawn chair Larry obviously in was the inspiration for Up. Yeah. Um, because he had the kid too. He even had <laughs> he his, the, have the kid. <laughs> <laughs> the kid Jerry. Um, also, also, <laughs> also inspired an Australian movie which we need to watch. Oh no. Um, based entirely on this cover. It's an Australian comedy called Danny deck chair. Look Danny at the deck chair. Danny deck chair. Look at the cover. <laughs> it's like this dude sitting in a lawn chair with the balloons and the balloons and I mean like oh, let's describe the dude though because <laughs> the dude looks like an off brand early career Owen Wilson. He does. You know? He does. <laughs> And any deck chair and, the and then whose face is in the balloons. The balloons are like when Mufasa's looking over Lion King and, the and there's like a face in it, but the balloons are the face <laughs> of somebody's face. Some girl's face. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, it was the inspiration for that movie as well. Uh, legendary film. Speaking of inspiration, what led you to this topic? <clears throat> uh, uh, let me uh, take a little peek here. Actually, that's a good point. I should uh, there is a guy in our Patreon. Oh, uh, he goes by the name of Michael Ian, which I assume means Indiana. You don't know that. I assume means Indiana because it's capital case. Could be a Michael in, and you're like Michael in what? He he leaves it to. And he goes leaves it for mystery. I don't know. Well, in we'll your mind out. now, Michael right? In this episode of Tell Him. Oh. Uh, but today he actually brought our Discord to level one. He boosted you don't know our what Discord it means. to don't level one. It's a big deal. You don't know yeah, what it means. Yeah, and the that's here's the reason why I'm bringing that up because he boosted it to level one. I need somebody in the comments to let us know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? You know that we happened? don't do drugs <laughs> and we are completely out of touch with what the kids are doing. We got no idea what any of this stuff means. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah. So uh, and then obviously there's the balloon boy hoax, which I literally forgot. About yeah. Until just now that this happened in Colorado. Oh yeah, yeah. I was there. I yeah. was the balloon boy. Do you I know who ended up being attic. in the balloon? David Blaine. And so <laughs> at the end, what what ended up happening was they found the kid. The kid reached the top of his head, unzipped his face. Right. <laughs> David Blaine steps out and does his weird like, you know, thing. <laughs> With just that, moving his head around. Like, Whoa! It's David Blaine, right? <laughs> And so anyway, um, <laughs> cool. Well, uh, that is that uh, if you haven't listened to the live episode, which we recorded last uh, week. Uh, yeah, we, it's came out. It, it come. It's we released <laughs> it now. It's available. You can <laughs> you know. Yeah, just watch the episode or listen to the episode right before this. Just just go back and the archive as the kids I don't know, say to do it. I don't know. Yeah, it's there. It's out. It's it was available. really, really good. Okay, so um, <laughs> is there anything else on uh, lawn chair Larry? Nah, he's my hero. Oh man, you know something about being at that height though. He didn't break the sound barrier, right? <laughs> <laughs> he he and uh, what was that guy's name? Hilton. Uh, Oh man, Miles, Miles, Hilton, Miles Hilton, Bauer, something. Bro yeah, what something like broke that. Broke the sound barrier. Broke the sound barrier. They both broke. You the know, sound actually, barrier. I've and this is uh, <laughs> against all odds. I saw it on the wiki when you turned it around. I saw the Miles Hilton Wikipedia page. It said that even though he couldn't see, he was guided to Sydney by the sound of fiddles. Hey. Thanks for watching things on last night. If you like this video, we have others you can watch or we have highlights some of our favorite moments from shows. Please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future episodes and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week on things I learned last night. <laughs>